Hey guys, good morning. Uh, welcome to today's video. It is a beautiful Wednesday morning, uh, one of the better days that we've had this week here in Connecticut. Uh, we're back now in Connecticut and I'm actually riding solo today. I am doing Huntington State Park here in Reading and I'm going to be riding the mountain bike. So the reason why I am riding solo today is because uh, Jason doesn't have a mountain bike and so um, that's one of the primary reasons and he also had to work today, he had to go back to work. Um, still unsure about riding the mountain bike, uh, he's getting pains in his uh, torso area and with mountain biking, you know, there's a lot of push-pull uh, movement of your upper body. And so um, that's still bothering him from his crash last week in Maine. I uh, actually had planned to do a workout today and the workout that I, well it's not really a workout, it's more of uh, for fun. I want to do laps around this park and I forgot to open my suspension. So this part right here, I usually have to get off. So I am just going to uh, talk over the video here because I realized that you can't really hear the audio because it was kind of breezy um, at the top of this hill. And the angle of my camera is a little too high. So that's probably why it didn't pick up the audio and I didn't have the external microphone on, which I now know that I should bring it next time. But I'm just going to talk over about what the goal or the objective is of this ride. So this is a week after we came back from uh, our main, our trip to Maine. And um, it was a lot of fun because we got to do a lot of mountain biking. And since, like I said earlier, Jason doesn't have a mountain bike. And so I decided to go solo on this uh, park and I'm very familiar with some of the routes, some of the, uh, the trails here. So um, I decided to do a uh, sort of a time trial um, of a loop that I am quite familiar with. So the loop is about 3.6 miles or 3.4 miles. And um, what I wanna do was time myself of how quickly I can uh, do this lap. So the thing about this trail is that it's a multi-use trail. So there are a lot of hikers like you could see here. Um, there's also other people mountain biking and there are also people riding their horses. So that does affect my time. Okay, there was a lady hiking there. So this trail there's another objective to this ride was not only do I want to um, do a time trial of this of this loop I also wanted to work on some of the mountain biking skills that 
um, I need to brush up on. And that is downhill. Um, and that is uh, tricky technical sections. Um, this particular part right here is the carriage road and really wide, um, really smooth. Um, some parts of the trail look like this. Um, other parts of the trail looks like the one that you saw earlier with all those rocks and roots. So uh, objective number two is um, practice better handling on the mountain bike. I actually um, did four laps of uh, my circuit, my DIY, my created circuit here. Um, the first lap, which is what you're seeing right now, I um, this is going to be my warm up lap just to kind of get the feel of what the trails, the trail conditions are like. So the cool part about this trail is that because you, um, you, you encounter different either people and um, other people going opposite directions, people with dogs, it's kind of a good practice on how to be aware of your surroundings while you're using the trail. And I understand that this is more of a double track, more wider trails, but it's a good practice, I think, for me, who is not very familiar, was not very good with um, any of the technical stuff yet. Um, I definitely think that, you know, being aware and just being in tune with their surroundings kind of helps uh, to hone in those skills. Um, I'm not sure if that transfers over to single track riding. I know single track is definitely a lot different than um, these types of trails here, but they're beautiful. I love this, this area, you know, just, it's just, there's ponds everywhere. Uh, and also um, there are some, you know, technical bits. So we're heading over to the more technical part of the trail. Again, for most of you who are uh, probably avid mountain bikers are going to look at me and say that is not technical at all. But to me, it was pretty technical. So the roots part is very tricky. Um, I, I always, um, that always tend to scare me, but these types of roots, there's not as many in this particular trail, but there's enough to kind of throw you off. And sometimes some of the roots will be too wet and uh, they can be pretty slippery. Um, rocks though, don't scare me as much as roots because rocks, I, I feel like my tires are, um, are able to go over the rocks a little better than the roots. So here I know that this trail does get um, a lot of people running or hiking. And so now we get the more trickier parts here with some of the, the rocks and stuff. And you kind of miss, you don't really see around the corner here. So it's a good practice for me to slow down or just lightly feather the brakes so that I can, it gives me time to react to what is um, what I'm seeing or what I will be expecting ahead of me. Luckily though, um, this particular day, there weren't as many people, um, running or walking or hiking, um, in the opposite direction. And so I was pretty clear, uh, all through, it was pretty clear all throughout. Um, so yeah, more practice on the downhill stuff, more practice on the technical stuff. So I also wanted to point out that this trail, these are not the only trails that you see here. There are obviously trails branching out in different directions, which one day I will try to explore. Um, Jason did wound up getting a mountain bike. So spoiler alert on that, he ordered it and um, hopefully it'll get shipped soon in time for him to try it out. And so one of these days, once his skills, once he hones in his skills a little bit better, we're going to try to explore further out uh, into um, other trails where there's less foot traffic. Uh, so I like this park because there's a lot of different geological features. So you see on the left there, I feel like I'm a 
a tour guide or something. But on the left, there's this beautiful yeah, rock feature. You can actually see the uh, striations wow. or the stripes of the rocks. Um, and it's different varying variations of different colors there. Okay, so now this section of the trail, um, I call it the Chunky Monkey because uh, there's all these rocks that you have to go up and it's uphill, by the way, you're actually having to climb it. So there's that little section that's a little bit of a climb and it's a little rocky. It does flatten out a little bit, but then it does continue to go up. Uh, it's really short though, and that's the thing about with um, the trails here. Uh, you get a good, um, good practice on uphill and climbing. Um, but it's not too technical where the climb goes on forever. But you do get some practice on climbing on more rocky terrain, like what you're seeing here. So this continues, so it flattens out a little bit here. It does get a, I tried to stay on the right side because I know that there are people mountain biking on this trail also, and they prob are, they're probably going in the opposite direction um, since nobody since pro people probably don't do this direction the way I'm doing, <laughs> I'm riding it because the climbs are steeper going in this direction. But I actually decided oh, to go on the left because I felt like the line was better on the left side. And so I tried to stay on the left. Um, you'll see later on in, I think lap three or four is when I almost, uh, I almost slipped and fell around here. So this section here is really super rocky and uh, I was really fighting to, to do this climb and trying to find, that's why you see me swerving. I was trying to find like the best line. That's the thing is when you do kind of this short climb is that you're going so slow that it gives you time to think about where to go next. Um, okay, so that was the end of that chunky monkey climb. And then we're going to keep going further and uh, the trail starts to kind of get this kind of loamy um, ground where it's soft. Um, so it, it makes you a little slower that way, but um, there's some rocks and roots in parts of this trail, but for the most part, this particular area is pretty smooth. So I wanted to also talk about the um, bottle cage situation that I had with this, I have with this bike. Reaching down, um, I have to go down a lot lower than my road bike uh, to grab the water bottle. And then that got me to thinking like, oh my gosh, if I'm going, if I have to reach down that low, that bottle is probably pretty low. And I don't know if I want it to be down closer to the ground because knowing that I may be riding over horse dung um, and other stuff that could be could, that could contaminate my water bottle. And so I actually uh, switch the position of the bottle mount. I ordered this particular device that you can pretty much mount a water bottle cage to anywhere on your bike. And um, I forget what it's called, but I'll, I'll link that particular item in a description uh, so that you, if you're interested, I don't know, it's not the best um, because I just went mountain biking again today and I noticed that it did slip down a little bit even though it's rubberized. So it's not the best um, option out there, um, but it does allow you to change or shift your bottle cage wherever you want it on the bike. And so I actually wound up putting it on my top tube and that allows the bottle to be away from the ground, splashing in your bottle or contaminating your, your drink, um, getting you sick. So I put it closer to the top tube so that it's also easier to reach. So this climb doesn't last very long and you'll see that there's a climb and then it goes down and there's a climb and it goes down eventually towards the end, which you'll see it's going to be just uphill climb to the parking lot which I stop at to uh, recover, grab a drink of water, grab something to eat, and then I do another lap.
Hi, good morning. So yeah, you could see that I'm kind of going a little fast here or going a little hard. I'm out of the, the saddle and uh, really not holding back on the speed here. And the downhill parts are, are a great way to recover, but I also, it's, it's a lot of fun. I've had so much fun just practicing that downhill um, skills. Although I think I'm a little better at that now. I think my next thing that I want to focus on is um, doing turns, um, tight turns, because on the single track, you know, they try to do, you have to do a lot of tight turns. So here, here are the older men uh, that you will see three more times later on. Anyway, yes, that's another, that's the next thing I think I want to focus on is uh, doing tight turns. I like this type of riding because it's more of like a cross country style riding and it's more of focusing on your fitness. But I also would like to hone in on my, my single track skills, which have to do with the climbing is not a problem. Um, the descent is not a problem as long as it's straight, but once it starts to get um, super turny and windy is when it scares me. So this section is the climb that is short, uh, but it is quite punchy. Um, I don't remember what the max grade is, but it's not a very long segment. Um, it's like a quarter of a mile long, but it's still long if it's, it's steep like this. And not only that, if you could see, if you look down closer to the ground, but you can't see it very well because of the poor angle of my camera, um, this section here has a lot of loose rocks and you almost don't want to pedal too hard otherwise your your uh, tires are just going to spin out and so there's you have to be careful otherwise you'll lose your footing here and so it's super steep and the the gravel is so loose the rocks are so loose that it's hard to find a good place to ride on and so I decided to go into the left side you could see a little bit of the trail that other people have um, this the section where people have ridden on um, so that's what I was riding on this section but then I realized uh, coming around the corner there might be somebody coming down hill and so I actually shifted eventually you'll see me shift to the right there so that just in case somebody is coming comes flying down this hill uh, and that's probably not a good idea that's the case all right so almost to the top so this section here is almost the top halfway there yeah it's not done yet because i get a little recovery here it flattens out and then it takes some deep breaths and then there's the rest of the climb <laughs> so once i get to the top of this climb uh, is when I hit the lap button and that would be the end of my of my warm-up I think shortly after I realized the left side here is a little too bumpy and so I think I I moved to the right I started riding on the right side here because it's a little bit more smoother Otherwise, I was kind of like jumping out everywhere. Um, I guess that's a problem with riding a hardtail um, where you're doing a seated climb on climbs like this. It does kind of, you know, wear you down or it does tire you out when you feel all those little bumps. So you see the tree up ahead. And so I hit the lap button once my back tire goes over its, there's a root and it goes over the, my back tire goes over the root. That's when I hit the lap button. And so there you go. Uh, uh,
but this here is my tube, <clears throat> my spare tube. Is hitting my leg a little bit so and it's velcro that's uh, keeping it in place so if I'm if I move it up here hopefully it doesn't slide down and it doesn't hit my shorts my shorts keep getting snagged on that that was definitely harder than I thought it would be that was just a warm-up lap. I think I went too hard. That's the only problem with not having a power meter is not being able to gauge. And I have to... I, I want to teach myself to uh, just consider perceived effort, perceived exertion, um, what is hard and what isn't, and uh, just scale back on it. So that was a little bit harder for a warm-up than I had wanted. I was pushing on 186 there. Uh, I don't know for how long. So let's do another lap and uh, we're gonna recover here and do another lap and go out again. harder than a five-hour ride or a one-hour ride on the road bike. The climbs are, that climb in the end is pretty brutal. I think I drank too much there. I can't drink a whole lot because I always have to keep my, whoops, lap.
So the reason why I brought up the shifting is uh, sometimes my shifting gets stuck. These are the shifting by my shifting. Not the best. Sometimes I have a hard time shifting up or down. But I am glad that I went with the one by right today. Or I'm sorry, one by changing. I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she wanted one more hey, last, last sure look at you. Yeah. Right. 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 Drill it down the downhills here because it's pretty straight and everything are easy trails. But when it comes to the line single track stuff, I just can't do it. Um, especially the super technical trails. Now these are nice trails for a hard town. But single track stuff, I struggle with a lot, especially with tight turns. And I feel like I don't have the best control of the bike with tight turns. So, So, finished up with my second lap. I'm gonna do my third lap now, just switching out the bottles. And not sure how I'm gonna feel uh, after the third lap. I may do one more lap depending on you know how I'm feeling. But man, that last climb is, it always gets me. It's so steep. I guess it's a nice uh, workout to do when you want to do steep climbs. Um, but anyway, uh, kind of a bummer that I don't have my, a power meter just to see what my average power is up that climb. Um, but I guess Strava has an estimated power. Who knows if that's accurate, but we'll take a look at it uh, when we get home. Hi guys. Uh, this is probably the last lap. Hi. Yeah, I think there's a you know, you don't want to be too right of people's face because like you approach them from behind. That's why I have the bell. 
A lot of people said they liked it. They liked that one. Here, look at this. That lap was hard. I think I'm gonna call it a day here. Ugh. I felt my legs at that last climb. Wasn't gonna be able to make it up, but it did. So yeah, uh, looks like I PR'd that segment Chunky Monkey each time. I don't know if you guys could see that. Uh, so 244 first time. 234 second time and then 233 I believe this is the last time I have one percent left of my battery so I'm gonna go ahead and do my cool down now and I'll see you guys sorry I had the uh, a podcast playing but awesome awesome ride it is now uh, almost noon time so that means lunch time I was out there for an hour and 46, well that was the moving time actually, an hour and 46 minutes. So the goal was to do two hours, but if I were to do two hours, it would have gone over the two hour mark if I had done another lap. And so that's why I uh, stopped it at an hour and 46 minutes. That and the last climb, uh, that last section of that climb, whoa. I knew I was slowing down. Um, so I did four laps. Um, the first lap being a warm up, sort of a warm up. <laughs> and I sort of had kind of honed in my skills in mountain biking, sort of. The downhill portions that um, scare me. Um, I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident in that. Um, the next thing would, on my list would be just to feel a little bit more confident in the more technical parts of mountain biking, although I'm not sure how badly I want to do that because I do enjoy that this type of ride where it's just a uh, a loop and there's no um, tricky kind of winding trails like single track trails you're just working on uh, mainly fitness so it's more of like a cross country style which I do prefer cross country style mountain biking first lap let me take a look here. I completed it in 23.43. That was my uh, warm-up lap um, with my heart rate being 167 beats per minute. Second lap was 23.38. Uh, third lap, 24.38, which I believe the third lap was where I had to slow down because there were either... Um, people riding uh, people the, the people on horseback and a couple of kids were in a trail and I didn't obviously didn't want to uh, bump uh, crash into them um, last thing I want to do and so kind of slow on that part and then the last lap was 2402 so I did slow down uh, quite a bit on the last lap and I did feel it and my heart rate actually was 171 beats per minute on the last lap so I might have gotten a little harder gone a little harder on the on the second lap there also known as my first actual lap anyways guys I hope you enjoyed today's video I am still working uh, or by the time you see this uploaded hopefully I'll have the main trip up um, I'm sure um, you could see why plans have changed from that and you could probably see why I'm riding solo uh, until next time guys don't forget to enjoy the rides. Bye-bye.